Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Playoffs are underway, so I wanted to hit Gil on some of his biggest takeaways from the first round. But Gil, first and foremost, got to talk about somebody who's not in the playoffs. So Savannah posted a video of LeBron turned up in the Maldives. <laughs> Thought it was Cancun at first, that water looked too nice. <laughs> turned up in the Maldives uh, with the tequila. LeBron actually tweeted just how, how tough and difficult it is for him to be watching this postseason and not be in it. He swore that he would, he would be back next year. For you as a star basketball player, how tough is it to be watching the playoffs, especially when it's teams that you know you could probably beat if you had a good squad? I mean, just as a competitor, period, you know, watching players that's behind you catch momentum, players that um, are in front of you distance themselves, you know, amongst, you know, rankings and all that stuff. So as a competitor himself, when you're when you're in that competitive mode and you're competing, you want to be able to be that last person that they're talking about. You know what I mean? I don't want to be sitting here and, you know, Steve Nash is got 10 more games going on and he out there doing and breaking records and stuff like that because that's like, oh, that could have been me. You know what I mean? So as a competitor, you it, it, it should irritate you that, you're not, you got to watch it from home. So we saw the Lakers perform this year. Uh, obviously wasn't up to par. Do you think that LeBron's tweet is going to age well or is it going to age like milk? Come on, man. It's going to age well. It always. I just have to know. You know what I mean? Like, there's only one, there's only one tweet that didn't age well. And I was like, you're talking about us being old. Right. But he del- the, the fucked up thing is he deleted it, then reposted it, then deleted it again. But at least he had the presence of mind to Back then? It. Yeah. <laughs> so and yeah. the other one was like April Fool's, like I'm done for the season. It was like, yeah, yeah it's not really though. It really is. <laughs> it was, huh? Yeah, I was out. Like, yeah. He didn't but, um, come back. You know, just, you know, you know, I think he's going to come back stronger. Um, I mean, he, he averaged 30, so I don't even know what stronger means. But... You know, he's going to be ready. You know, Anthony Davis is going to be healthy. You know, Westbrook has one year under his belt if he stays. I mean, so you're going to have three guys who really, you know, are really going to mesh better. Um, they're going to they're going to work out a lot together, and they're going to make it a point to, to be different going into next season. All right, let's, let's move over to the Nets Celtics series. Obviously, I don't think this has gone any way that, that we could have anticipated other than Celtics fans. You were big on Celtics early on. What's changed for them now, and where do you see them going in the postseason? I still don't like the Celtics. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I still don't like the Celtics. They're, they're the number. Two, they're, they're, they are the number two seed. You know, let's just be honest. Um, I can. I see why Kevin's struggling. You know. You know. You know. When it comes to playoffs, it's all about matchups. You know, it's all about matchups. No matter how great he is, on the other side, you have you have players that are capable of, you know, you know, calming you down, keeping you contained. Well, now you got three players on that team that can potentially contain you. So all they have to do is just rotate all three of them on you the whole game. And you have to play defense on Tatum and Brown by yourself. You know, you don't have a relief pitcher. See, so if you're busting Tatum's butt, throw Marcus Smart on you. You start busting Marcus Smart, throw Jalen. Throw both of them. Well, on the other end, you, you have to guard Tatum by yourself. You have to guard Jalen by yourself. So you don't actually have any time to rest. So that's, that's what's going on with the Celtics, that, you know, he's guarding Tatum. Jalen Green is guarding him. So Tatum don't have to play defense for a couple possessions. He gets to rest on a couple yeah. possessions. And then when Jalen gets tired, Tatum goes. Jalen gets to rest a couple possessions. Well, Kevin Durant has to play defense the whole game and try to score the whole game. You know, so it makes it harder for him to actually, you know, be perfect. You know, you know that, that what we've seen against Milwaukee, that's harder now. Yeah. You know, because, you, you know, this is a series where they got three guys who they can keep throwing at you. But one of those guys, you have to guard the whole time. You know what I mean? So that's what the playoffs do bring. So like with Kyrie, Kyrie has – see, this is Kyrie series. You got to understand. So Kyrie can – he can play offense the whole time and don't really have to play defense on Smart. He don't really have to play de- – because Smart is not going to come out there and try to score 30, 40. 
Smart is going to do his little antics and all that, but that's on the defensive end. But Smart is going to just shoot jumpers in, in the corner. So Kyrie is the guy who has the advantage in this series, not KD. So we saw Kyrie do his thing game one, going at Celtics fans, a double burst, 39 piece. Obviously Tatum hits the game winner. Hasn't looked quite at that level of games two and three in, in, in the series. Why do you think Kyrie's game is off right now? Um, you know, I don't like excuses. Um, when it comes to games, but the, the, the fact that he's fasting right now, yeah. that does play a part. Um, if anybody goes back and look at all the Muslim players during fasting, look at their numbers, they're horrible. Uh, I remember Dream. If you look at Dream, I think back then, when I was younger, I remember it was around February when yeah. they fasted. Look at his February numbers through his career. They're, the, they're going to be the worst across the board. Um, whenever, whenever Dream had to fast, that was, that was part. Because you got to remember, if the sun goes down around 7, game starts at 7. So basically, he's eating his first meal during the game. Yeah. He's eating his, meal, his first meal during the game. So like 7, 7.05. So he's probably in, in layup lines trying to eat that banana. Trying to, so, you know, you're going to be – I remember there's times where um, I didn't eat. I'm dizzy. You know, you can't – you're just drinking nothing but water. Well, you can't even drink water. You can't even drink water. You can't even drink water. So – you know, that plays a part, cramping and all this. So now you're trying to stuff yourself during the game and you're trying to use that energy to play, which is kind of hard. I know, should the league make a concession for Muslim players and maybe stagger these game times, start a little bit later in the evening so they can actually get a meal too? Or is it just, these are the slots, these are the windows? These are, these are the slots, windows. There's only one, two, five in the league and they're not going to change the whole yeah. morale around, a, you know, around five players. Um, so it is what it is, you know, you know, he's he's going out there, he's playing, you know, that's that's all that really that, you know, you gotta look at him. You gotta give him his, his credit because he's playing. You know what I mean? Dream played, uh Mahmoud played. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's just they're gonna struggle at some times. So you, you mentioned not eating, you feel dizzy. How tough is that? Because there's been various points at, at different levels of hoops, but this is not in the NBA in the playoffs. To have to now go literally from sun up to sundown we're not even a sip of water, still go through your pregame routine, still try to get ready to play a basketball game. We saw the shot of Kyrie, I believe, coming in for game three with all his bags, and he looked tired. I mean, he just looked like, you know, some people thought like, oh, he don't want to be here. I wouldn't say that. He looked like somebody who was fast and didn't get no food. In the you got to remember, a regular, a regular high-level athlete, you know, you're eating breakfast, right? You're going to get your liquids in. You're going to, you know, get your lunch in, have some more liquids and then you're gonna have your pregame, you know, you're gonna have your pregame meal with some more liquids. Well, those three meals are not gonna be in this man's body. So um, you, you're trying to have a race on, the in, on you know, imagine having a race, no gas. Yeah. You have no gas in your car, yeah. right? And you're now trying to race at the same time by putting gas in, right? Your body's burning it more than what you're putting in. So, him trying to go in and eat uh, a bar. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I ate a bar and drink Gatorade. Yeah, but you already had three meals, so your body is not on empty right now. So he has to try to fill his body up to, to, to be able to burn what he's eating in. So his body is playing on fumes at this point. You know, so that, that is going to be harder from an energy standpoint. I'm surprised he's not body cramping because you don't have no liquids in your body. And you sitting here, you know, running up and down, I'm surprised he's not cramping as much. As, uh, as 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 anybody else. Like, you, the kid Pablo from Duke, you see how bad he cramped up? <laughs> he was losing seven pounds a game. Now imagine if that was him. Yeah. He's losing seven pounds he don't even have in his body. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we heard reports uh, Ben Simmons was going to try to come back Monday. He was ramping up and going to try to come play game four. Uh, reports come out Monday morning or Sunday that he woke up with some back soreness and is not going to play that game. Looks like he probably, you know, he's done. Are you surprised that Ben didn't play at least one game this season? No. Um, you know, I, I, I knew it wasn't the mental thing when he showed up in Philly. If you're scared of a crowd and you're mentally scared of something, you would try to avoid it. Right, you try to avoid that situation, but the fact that he showed up 
all sitting ready to go, grabbing balls, throwing here in the booze, and yeah. showed that he was it wasn't the it wasn't the crowd that 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 scared him. You know, I just you know you got to remember you're, you're talking about a, a, a really high level athlete. You know, and your first impression is you want to go out there 100. percent So you know the fact that he needs his back to go up and down and twist and play and jump and do all that. I, I don't think he was really 100. percent You know, getting ready. People are like, whoa. He, he didn't play any games. How? Well, he's training. He's been training. Like if he's, you got to remember, if he didn't plan on, you know, being with the team and not, and then he has to go to, you know, Jersey and then get ready for the season. You know, I'm pretty sure he tweaked this back. You know, sometime training for, you know, um, Philly, and then when they made the trade, just trying to ramp it up. You know, it's it's back spasms or whatever. So you're hooping, you've dealt with those before. Just for people at home who may be like, oh, it's just a bad back, you know. I've seen backs ruin people's careers. Just how, how difficult it is to deal with those type of injuries? Like, I don't personally know anything about, well, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retract. Hold on. Okay, so my first introduction to, like, backs are serious was Bobby Sura. So Bobby Sura came into practice. I mean, he's, like, just can't move. And I'm like, they were like, yo, what happened? He's like, I woke up, bent over to brush my teeth. He said, I dropped my, my toothbrush, went to go bend it over, couldn't get back up. And I'm like, wait, your toothbrush? Wait, so you, it's not like you was dancing. He's like, toothbrush, I don't, I just went to go pick up my toothbrush. So that was the first time, like, hey, oh, simple stuff like that. So I was getting, um, I was getting my knee looked at. So no, I've never had a back problem, nothing. And me sitting in the um, the scanner, back was on flames. Yeah. And I had to stop it. So I was supposed to get both my knees looked at, and I can only look at the one. Yeah. I didn't even want, don't need, I said, don't even look at the second one. I can't take it. My back was hurting. I went out of there limping. Like, I'm limping. My back was pulled. I'm like, I'm done. I said, this is how I'm feeling at 39. I'm, it's over for me. Yeah. You know, but it was just that simple, just like doing nothing. I mean, Come on, regular people every day hurt their backs. They they know they know, but they don't want to see a guy who's making forty million tell me his back hurt. I was just at Coachella this weekend, so I can definitely attest to that. After one day, I walked about two miles. I'm good, bro. My back's still hurting right now. I still can't sit up straight, so I get it. <laughs> but let's let's move on to the 76ers. I know I think the answer you're gonna say, but we still gotta hit it. How deep of a playoff run can this Sixers squad make with Embiid dealing with a thumb injury that's gonna require surgery after the season? And hard nursing that hamstring injury. Listen, if, I, I, if we make brackets, my bracket was 4 0, lose the next one. They go 4 0, and then. Uh, that, remember, I said it. I said it from the beginning. They, they, the way they play and all the flaws that they have, there's only two teams they can beat with being undisciplined. And that was Toronto and Cavs. Because Toronto don't have superstars. Cavs didn't have superstars. So James being who James is, and B being who Embiid, they can sway that series. Because there's no there's no superstar status that can take over that series. You know, so you have no worries there. Um, now that second round, whoever you play against, whoever you play against, you know, like so when James Harden goes, so how Trey Young is having troubles. You know, you got, you know, you got Kyle Larry guarding you, you set a screen, and then P.J. Tucker's guarding you, and then you're like, I don't want P.J. Tucker, let's set a new screen, then boom, Jimmy Butler's guarding you. Yeah, that's exactly what James Harden has to go through. He's going to have to go through all those defensive guards, and then on the other end, whoever you guard is going to be trying to score. You try to, Hero's going to try to score on you. Any of those guards, they're going to be coming at them. They're going to be running off. They go and all that, you know, turn the ball over and don't get back on defense. That's not going to work against that team. So there's no way. Like you're going to have to play perfect basketball offensively. Forget your deep offensively. You're going to have to play perfect because they're going to be playing great defense. And do you think that Harden will be able to now bounce back and start another guy who's been struggling in the playoffs? Obviously, done with the injury. Is he going to be able to bounce back at all, or should he just? Uh, listen, as a, a guy who loves Harden, I really want to see him go into the summer healthy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my thing. Go into the summer healthy so you can 
you can, you know, work on your hamstring a little bit, work on your game, work on, you know, do what, what, what we love, what got you to this point. That's not who you are right now. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't see him turning around and averaging the next series 30, you know, 30 and 10 on a Miami defense. You know, I, I just don't, I just, that is not going to happen. You know what I mean? That, that Miami's defense, they got, you know, they got a Jimmy Butler guy who's going to take it all serious. You know what I mean? He's going to rough him up. He's going to play. He's going to make him use that hamstring. And I don't, I don't see, you know, like, <laughs> I don't see Harden get out of that, you know, you know, in full tack. So it's one of those is I think he's going to rely on trying to have, you know, 15, 10, 15 assists a game. It's going to be one of those games, and that's not good enough. You know, even if he gives if he gives you 15 points and 10 assists, that's not good enough to get through Miami. You're going to have to score that. That James Harden that's scoring 30, 40, 50, that's the James Harden with Embiid that will get you out of that second round. And I don't see James Harden playing at that level right now. So when you look across the Eastern Conference, there's a team we haven't talked about yet. But are you ready to jump on the Bucks bandwagon? Listen, listen. Listen, Bucks is still the defending champs. I get it. I get you love Milwaukee and the Cheeseheads. I get it. I pander for tickets. <laughs> um, with what what the, the thing with everything going the way everything is going, it looks like they might be the favorite again. Even with Chris Middleton hurt, and uh, he's out at least two weeks. We don't know. Yeah, but I think they can get through. They can get through the first two rounds. Um, without Middleton. I mean, you still got Greek the Freak over there um, who plays a game like he created the the settings. You know, <laughs> it's like he created his own settings and it's like, yeah, give me the ball and I just do whatever I want. There's no rules. Um, so I think he can, he can will them. You know, the way he plays the game, I think he can will them against... Um, I mean, you know... That'd be a hard series for him by himself against Boston. We still got Drew. You still got, you know, you still got some. some but uh, but that'd be, you know, that'd be a, that'd be a hard. What's the name? It'd be a hard. Like he he would need. Like I would rather have Middleton in going against Boston. Um, but they are favored. Boston, you know, if they can defeat um, Nets and get them out of the way, you know, their chances their chances in heightens because at the end of the day, when you look west. You know, you know, you don't know what's going on with Booker. You see them struggling without Booker. Um, you know, Golden State looks like Golden State looks, you know, but whoever plays Golden State from the East wants to be in that type of game, that up and down, you know, that up and down frenzy type of basketball. So, you know, like looking the way it's, it's panning out, you can say, all right, uh, Golden State versus Boston, Golden State versus um, Milwaukee. All right, whoever's healthy. So, obviously, Booker hurt. You know, we don't know how the Sun Series is going to pan out. Are the Warriors now the favorites in your mind? I think right now, if we, if, we, if we stop it right now um, and Booker's out, you know, Warriors, are, Warriors look like they're the favorite to come out of the West. Um, it, you know, it all depends on what's, what's going on with Booker for the Suns. Um, you know, it's like, you know, Booker for the Suns is technically like not having – um, Curry, you know what I mean? If Curry's not playing for two weeks, you're sitting there like, mm, I don't know about the Warriors right now, no matter what else, but at this point, Warriors look like, you know, they're, they're, in the fr they're the front runners until, you know, we see what happens with the Suns. I mean, you look at the luxury of bringing Steph off the bench because Jordan Poole's out there cooking. With Poole, you know, is he a max level player in your mind? You know, so I'm, I, you know, before we I answer that, I, I, look, we I need to give we need to give Steph his his yeah, for sure. his flowers. He, he, sir, you get flowers for doing what you have done, and that is be man enough to come off that bench. Never, <laughs> ever, <laughs> never would have agreed. Never. Coach said, Gil, look. George, First of all. Jordan Pills cooking right now. We need you to come be that six man. Be that energy guy. I'm the What's franchise player. I'm Chef Curry around this mother. I'm balling. And you're telling me to come off for come off for the six man? 
No. No. Me? No. I, I can say if I was having it, I was struggling this year. No, I'm balling. I'm balling this year. What you mean? Come on, because I, you know, I missed the last few weeks. No. Who else is on this line? That, ah, sub them out. <laughs> like, like, no. But the fact that that's the type of person he is, that he's saying, okay, young fella's cooking. Y'all moving, y'all put him in, and I just keep coming off the bench. So the fact that he's still coming off the bench is serious because he's willing to do it. See, I don't mean, but that's what I said. In the second round, we're going to see what happens. But at this point, Poole coming off the bench now, it don't even matter anymore for him. He's already solidified what he is. You, you are a future, you are a future player. Like, so it don't matter if, if he comes off the, I'm pretty sure he's going to come off the bench second round. I mean, in the second round. But it don't even matter for him. You, you already, think mentally he's... he's you're my, yeah, I don't think he really cares. I think, I think him starting now is Steph saying, just let's just get through this round. Let's just get through this round. Because it's easy to like, oh, we'll bring Clay. I got to remember, they didn't even bring Clay off the bench when he came back. You know, but the fact that you're in, you're back-to-back -back MVP... You don't put you don't leave a back to back MVP on the bench unless the back to back MVP is saying, Do you? Do you? This is the first round. Let him get his confidence. Let me get back into my mojo. And then, you know, we'll figure it out in the second round. You know, but so but at this end, him going to this the second round is not even everyone knows he's a starter. He's a legit starter in this league. You know, so I don't even know if I don't even know at this point if they can afford them. Uh, I mean, there's going to be some moves that need to be made. Wiggins but, probably be the odd man out looking at the numbers. He's an all-star. <laughs> he's an all-star. So, you know, it's one of those things like, eh, I don't know. Like, it, it, it's, it's a good thing to have, but it's like that. It's, it's going to be that, um, that James Harden situation where $80 million for four, and we got... We got we got we got a hundred over here for you, and we got a private plane. We got you, we got your five million dollar house. We got you know the, that's what someone else can do for them, you know at this point. But I, I know in Golden State they gonna they can do the same. Yeah, yeah we got we got ten million dollar house paid for. You know, we got some couple jets. We got, we got a couple of jets and all that. You take this four year, but that's but that's why you can't really, you know, th those that that cap shit is just that's that's for. That's for poor. As I got older. Poor Richmond. So I got older and I learned the hustles in the game and what each particular city can offer in terms of whatever. Like, hey, obviously, the listen, Bay got the tech on I'm a, If you, I'm a billionaire, you're not going to tell me how I can spend my money. Yeah. All right? Yeah, I know there's this guideline and I can't pay, but I I, I, I can do other things, goddammit. I can have some blank checks to some other people around yes. here. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can, I can, you're not going to tell me I can't. You got the foundation, it's called uh, Buckets. Okay, let's go ahead and donate 10 million to Buckets. <laughs> like, I'm gonna figure out how to give you these checks yeah. for you to stay. You just, you know what I mean? But that's the, that's what they can do. So let's not pretend that this, 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 uh, this, this is, this is just a real cap. Yeah, for sure. This ain't no real cap. <laughs> that's a cap for, we supposed to play fair, you know, but, you know, you know, right now he's gonna be worth, Every penny that they can, he asked for. Do you think the NBA even needs a salary cap? Yes. Why? Um, okay, imagine Elon Musk being an owner. Right? That's just Elon Musk Twitter. being an owner. Yeah. Who, who, who's star player safe? Who's star player safe? I guess the one argument I want to make is how many star players can you put on the team with one ball? I get it, but if you're now that fifth or sixth guy. Uh, a guy who has unlimited money, does he really give this shit? That's right. All right, Giannis, they can offer you 125. I, I, I get 300 million. Giannis going to be like, uh, 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 shit, all right. Sure. <laughs> all right, Jimmy Butler, I got 200 million. All right, uh, Booker, I got 300 million. Well, what are these players gonna say? No, I'm just gonna stay here for the 125. No, for sure. right? He can spend a billion dollars on five players and don't even blink. I guess all I'm saying is- <laughs> So you see why you need a cap. <laughs> we've seen it in baseball, we've seen it in other sports, and it's not as if the cap in the NBA has created this parody that the league's been looking for. It's only a certain number of teams are gonna be in the championship 
competition every year, regardless of all having the same quote unquote pot to now pull from and distribute out. But see, you gotta remember, like like um, baseball don't have a salary cap, right? Yeah. Do they have one? No. no. But you got how many? But how many players is on the team? Well, basketball is only 12, 13. So if you put an Avengers team there, they're destroying everybody. That's real. But it's not even about that. Now think about, now think about, like it's like shoes, right? And this is why you need to sell. If you put those on the market, and the market says they're a hundred bucks, but someone else says, I, I really want them. I'm gonna pay three. I'm gonna pay three hundred. Now you're sitting here like, oh my god, I did not want to pay three hundred for these shoes. Yeah. But I don't want to ruin my team, and I got to lose my player. So okay, I, I'll, I'll pay you three hundred. Now you're paying three hundred for some shoes that's only worth a hundred. That messes up. That messes up you financially, and that's what was going on. Like so, you're not, you're not gonna tell Cuban and and Doyle how to spend their money, so they can inflate these prices all they want. So if you don't have a guideline that stops them from doing it, they're gonna overpay. They're gonna over. They're gonna make you overpay for players that you don't want to overpay for. So if you're if you're sitting there and, and you're an owner that actually has five hundred million. <laughs> no. you, you're not you're not 40 10 12 billion intact and you sitting there with the one billion dollars and you sitting there like like sitting there mediocre trying to nickel and dime and them owners are like well i like i, I like your player you know i want to give him 150 and you're like well he's only worth 75 i think it's worth 150 and you're like oh i can't lose him the city is behind he's selling all his seats and you're like i gotta pay double for this now that messes up. Now, if you was planning to pay him 75 and this guy 45 and this guy, now he took out 150 million, that messes up the rest of your your your, your sheets. So if you don't have that, if you don't have that cap, them big boys, them big boys gonna sit there like, yes, sir. Click, click. And I was always, I was always taught 200 million, 200 million, 200 million, 200 million. If you can't hang, you got to get out the game. Yeah, but 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 it's, that's what I said. It's still a business, but you you got people like it's not. You got to remember, everyone's not equal pay across the board. I get it. And you let somebody you let somebody say, All right, let them try for one year. Say one year, no salary cap. I think you do a cap with luxury tax. No luxury that. cap, no cap. Watch watch the shit that happens. Somebody's gonna try to spend somebody spend a billion dollars on five players. They don't care. Easy, for sure. Yeah, that right there, that, that right there. But will they win is the question. It don't even matter. That's There's gonna be a hard time beating them if they got five superstars. All right, last thing I got for you. Obviously, Booker now sideline. Pelicans tied the series up 2 2. Should the Suns be worried at all through the rest of this series? Are you, you, you serious? I, I have to ask. You know, but you know the league can make moves. I'm not going to say no names. I got in trouble apparently on an, another episode of this show for pointing it out. But they can make certain moves. In, in, <laughs> they can make certain moves. Certain moves. They can I get make it. certain moves. I just watched the movie. <laughs> Was it called Game Time? Is that the movie called Game? I just watched it. Listen, I get it. I know what you're trying to say. Um, <laughs> you throw in one element, changes the whole series. There's, well, there's, certain, there's a certain button. There, they there's can a certain, push. but there's a certain button. The Terminator comes out. <laughs> I get it, and you know now you're 0 and 18. I get it, <laughs> like because <laughs> that person's that element has already came into the series and it took another L. Yeah. Um, if that happens, it's just f-ed up. That's just f-ed up if that happens. But um, Pelicans, look, Pelicans playing great. You know they're playing with heart and soul. Um, you know Chris Paul is is, is crafty, smart. Um, It'd be it'd be really hard to you know to beat that team because you got to see that you have to play perfect offensively, yeah. and you have to play perfect defensively to beat a Chris Paul team. Um, so no matter no matter what, they're gonna grind it out. They're gonna slow the game up since Bar- you know since uh, Booker's not there, um, and, and at least try to get to you know to, to win this 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 three. You know, so if I'm them, depending on um, you know, if we win game three, I mean, if we win the third game, so with game five, they win game five, I'll probably hold them out a little bit more. Um, see what happens in game six. If he, if he misses games, I mean, if they win game six, then I'll just bring him back for game seven. Yeah. 
but you know, you try to you try to manage and try to you know. Um, you know, you got at least at least one. But I don't see Suns losing this series now. Yeah, that's that's gonna be tough. But now you see why I said Willie Green should have been you know coach of the year. You know, he he, he did a great job with that team. I respect black men named Willie. That's just me. <laughs> So this has been another heat check with no show with Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> I almost said something. Look, some of y'all going to be in Cancun with, with these teams. Y'all need to go to Maldives if you got that LeBron bag. It seems like a much better location. But we'll be back with more very soon. <laughs>